Jesus is the number one of the Father. There's no other one through whom people might be saved. And his words is the only solution to our lives. And if you don't recognize that, Jesus said, you cannot be my disciple if you do not hate even your spouse and your children. And do not leave them behind and follow me. What does it say? It says in comparison to Jesus, it means that your family is second in comparison. Amen. Hallelujah. Many people put their spouses before Jesus. They put their children before Jesus. And that will not, that will not go off good for you. Why? Does Jesus think he's so important? Is that the business? Huh? That is godly order. You can never, ever, ever mess with God's order. Remember, it's God's order. It's not an order of importance. It's an order of godliness. I can say an order of functional, a functional order for you to receive it better, but I will actually talk nonsense because it's actually just plain straight God's order. He's got an order. And whenever we mess with that order, it's like you put something else in front that should not be in front. Amen. The example that I use, you cannot reverse a trailer down to Durban. Or I go to Malawi and I reverse a trailer to Durban. When you do not go by God's order, it is as good you, put, you try to reverse a trailer to heaven. Amen. Amen. So God's got an order. And that is an order of function. But I'm not going to try to manipulate people, and preachers should never manipulate people or try to convince them it is better. They should rather believe God the way he created it in Jesus' name. So what is God's order? God's order, we cannot function without God's order. We cannot function in a proper way. And that's what Satan comes to mess all the time with is God's order. Okay? It's God's order. God's order is in a household that the man is the head of that home. Satan God is to not the boss. Understand that very clear. The man is not the boss in the house. He's the head. It's a big difference between a head and a boss. Is Jesus your boss? Huh? I cannot imagine him being my boss. He's my leader. He's my head. He can never be a boss. Amen. It is Satan who is a boss. Whenever you see demons manifest, they, some of those demons will tell you, I am the big boss. I is the great boss. <laughs> Amen. God's leadership is not about who is the boss. Not the order of importance but an order, just a godly order. But if we ignore this godly order, then this godly order, we will, if we ignore it, we will not function as God wants us to function. Amen. And that's why God laid down certain things. One of those orders is, a woman should not wear the clothing of a man. And let me tell you, it's not so much to do with clothing, but uh, the clothing represents people. Amen. That means that a woman should not be like a man. That's what it says. The clothing is just the clothing, but the clothing is important because the clothing represents a specific type of person, and the clothing in this case represents a certain gender. Amen. So I know from nature itself, it doesn't look good if a woman dress up as a man. It just doesn't look good. Because it's not supposed to be according to God. And I remember my grand grandfather was extremely strict on this one. When the little daughters and law came to visit, they made sure that they didn't even had pants on. Now let me tell you, you get feminine, fe fe feminine pants for sure. But I tell you, please, and a man should not wear the clothing of a woman. 
And today people do that. Why do you think people do that? Remember, there's not sexual problems on the earth. There's rebellion problem on the earth. Rebellion against God and the way he created things. It's like a, a certain man. He started a company, a big company, like Henry Ford or any other company, or the Tesla guy now, whatever his name is. I forgot his name. Then he trains up certain people to do the things in that firm. He's the one who got the vision. He's, he's got the technology. And, he's, and, and, and he discovered certain things. So he discovered this car and he creates this car. And after a couple of years, the people that he appointed and he trained up come and tell him that he's actually running the firm wrongly. And he's actually building his cars wrong. They're going to take over the, 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 the company and they're going to tell him how he should create his cars. That's what people do today. And people will even do that with a company. I know, people are like that today. The guy who started the company, who invented a certain car or a certain engine or a certain whatever, after a couple of years, because Satan is around, the spirit of rebellion is around, they will rise up against him and say to him, hey, actually you're creating it wrong. It should be like this and that and that. And then they tend to want to take over that company. And if his legal documents is not in order, they can do that. That's what's happening today, every day. That happened with Henry Ford, so by the way. And then Henry Ford had a first company. It was not Ford Motor Company. It was something, Ford something else. So the people that he trained up and the people that he equipped eventually worked him out. His legal documents were not in order. They hijacked him and they pushed him out. And, he, and they fired him. Can you believe it? It was Ford something. I can't remember the details. It was not Ford, a motor company like it's today. So eventually they fired him. Out of their own company, the very car that he found, the people fired him. Can you believe it, life? Then he started Ford all over again. And he started Ford, a motor company. And he again rose to power because he was the man with the vision. And he had a very great vision. His vision was that every working class person can have an affordable car. And that's why you got a car today. In the past, it was only the rich and the famous who could owe a car. So Henry Ford made name. Another other thing that he invented is weekends. There weren't weekends in the industrial age. So he invented the weekend. He said we cannot allow the work people to work every day. So he brought in the Saturday and the Sunday. So he was actually a great man. But then they fired him, hijacked his company, and he had to start all over again. But he rose to power again because he had the, obviously the vision. And the cars that they hijacked from him still exist today. Lin Lincoln. Lincoln, the cars. Lincoln. And later on, some of those companies that fired him went bankrupt and he bought them back. You can see the man that had a vision eventually was the willing man. But after learning a couple of lessons, the very company that he created and the very car that he invented, and then he appointed people and he helped them to stand up and train them how to do it, they fired him. That's the way it's going on around you. People are wicked. And if you start any business, any business, any school, any church, anything, you need to make sure that your legal documents is completely, totally in order and waterproof or fireproof or hijackproof. That's the way people are. And that's the way people are with God. He's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of the human race. He's the creator of the earth. And today people want to tell him how he should do things. They want to fire God and tell him, stand back, God, you did a great job, but let us take over. We now at a level where we can start to tell you how you should do things. So how, do, how do, does the human race today tell the people, they tell God how he should do things? Well, transgender. God, we made a mistake. We think you sometimes make a mistake. Some people that get born, it's not really what they're supposed to be, God. Somewhere you made a mistake genetically. You made a mistake, God. This one was actually meant to be a woman. 
So the medical world start to pray, play God and say, no, this one should not be a man. This one should be a woman. And then they've got all the hormones and things that they start to treat such a person, inject him with all sorts of things. And after a while, operation, they remove what should be removed and try to make of this man now a woman. That is how the humans that's created by God, the earth is created by God, the seasons is created by God. Everything is created by God. And now humans stand up, life, as they did with Henry Ford. And try to tell God, listen God, you, do, you did a good job, but now it's time that we take over. And that we tell you now how you should actually run the universe. You, you did it all along actually wrong, God. And so we bring in certain things. This man was not supposed to be a man. He should be a woman, for example. And that's why wherever you go on the earth today where Satan is ruling and reigning, and is ruling and reigning in the world, he's pushing his rebel way. That's why I say to you, there's not a sexuality problem on the earth, but there's a rebellion problem, a rebellion against the way God made things and created. That's a rebellion problem. You understand? This one you should know today. That's why the people went into rebellion, and those who went into rebellion, they've been given over to all sorts of evil, unclean nonsense, that the women burn with lust for other women. It's crazy, satanic, and demonic. The problem is not a sexual problem. The problem is a rebellion problem. And men burn with lust in their heart for other men. Crazy. Funny. Demonic. Silly and stupid. Amen. And we look today in leadership. The Belgium next president is going to be a woman, a Jewish woman, Clive. It's going to be a woman. God said, I do not allow a woman to exercise authority over a man. A woman should not wear the clothing of a man, the clothing of a man, because the clothing represents a certain gender. So this woman is now appointed into the position of a man which God created a man to be in. But now the human race rebel against God and say, God, you made a mistake by saying to us how we should run the world and who should be in leadership, etc., etc., etc. So now that, that Jewish woman becomes now the next president or prime minister, whatever they call them, of Belgium. And so it's going around the earth, around the globe, the same thing, and you see it all over. That's a tendency now. Women start to really rule now. New Zealand, Belgium, you can go all over the world, and you see the same tendency. Spiritual things work like that. You don't see one. You see a wave of wickedness, or you see a wave of godliness. In the church of Jesus. That's why when I pray for people in a prayer line, there is one woman that cannot have children. Not only one. It's always God line them up for me. When I see again, there's 12. As a wife of a move of God. And God line them up. I've seen that God in the, in the line. That people will sit in one line. And I take out the line and people say, okay, he's just taking that line. God has placed them for me in one line. That I can pray for them. God work in the hearts of people. God is amazing. When it concerns you. As a child of God. And you are closely with God. And connected to God. He will arrange things for you. I am the pastor. I am going to pray for you. If there is a certain problem in a church. People who is addicted to something. God will line, the, God will line them up for me. In one line in the church. 
It's amazing. I've seen it so many times. It's amazing. In one line, can you believe this? Then they all sit in one line. And it looked funny when I picked the whole line. And I pray for the same thing for the whole line. But God has lined them up for me. Because I am God's child, I'm connected to him, and God, when I do things, God will line them up for me. And so God will line up for your opportunities when, you are, when God is pleased with the way that you live. And that is God's order in function. Say so God's order in function, God will line things up for you. 